Eugene. It's called self-care, man. Most of your mascara is running. Yeah, yeah, and your antlers are all moosed up. Just, bro. Your criticisms do not amuse me. Yeah, I may have um, tried way too hard on that like 15 second cartoon. <laughs> Welcome all of you thrifty nerds. I am super excited about today's video. Normally we do thrift hauls or we go thrifting or we do a 101, but today we're actually going to be doing something a little bit different. I am so freaking excited. This right here, this one right here is episode number one of a new show on the channel called Thrift Store Hero. That is when I go into thrift stores and I try to find vintage or even modern sometimes items that are really good and really usable but are just not going to find new homes. So what I want to do is give them a fresh new face and see if we can take something from three dollars and the garbage to over a hundred dollars. So today if you haven't figured it out we are going to be tackling three moose siblings so these guys and a girl because I've got two brothers and a girl as far as I'm concerned I don't know do women moose have antlers I don't know we're gonna say yes now I have had these guys listed as is in the shop since about May of 2019 they were listed for $22 I was selling them in a, as a set and even in the description I said these guys are a little rough around the edges they would be perfect as a craft I'm guessing they were hand painted most likely in the 70s and 80s they are looking a little rough I've listed them since May it's really not hard to see why they haven't really sold they're kind of a weird cross between children's decor and the bad hunting lodge I, I don't know so today these lucky moose siblings are getting a fabulous makeover I'm going to be using a resin compound to make them really really pretty now I've only used resin maybe two or three times before so I am new to this but I've been watching so many videos it's ridiculous I've been watching artsy mad woman I've been watching Evan and Caitlin I've been watching random videos that are suggested by YouTube so I've been learning as much as I possibly could my first few pours came out really terrible they were filled with bubbles. I didn't quite understand what I was doing, but I think I finally met the point where I understand what I'm doing and I'm not gonna completely ruin these mice, moose, mice. So just to make sure I don't screw this up in case I am more confident than I should be, we are gonna start with Eugene. Eugene is the one with the broken antler and the smeared mascara and we are going to try him first. That way if I do screw something up, then you know it's gonna happen to the one that's already kind of a little bit too beat up to sell for a profit anyways. So that is the goal. That's what we're going to do. We're going to cover all three moves in this video. So let's go on ahead and get started. All right. So before I poured any expensive resin on any of these mises, I wanted to make sure that I could create a mock-up of what it might look like and make sure that I would like it. I used a free system called Canva and basically what Canva allows me to do is easily pull in an image and remove the background in just seconds. So that's essentially what I just did. And then what I did is I pulled the mousse into Photoshop. I found just some resin images on Photoshop. I'm not going to be using these images um, in any kind of sale. So I just found a pattern that I really liked with colors that I usually end up using anyways. I dragged it over the mousse with the background cut out inside of Photoshop and then I created an overlay with that layer. And essentially what that does is that wraps the mousse in the top layer. And yeah, I decided it looked really amazing and that we should move on to the actual project. So as we've discussed, Eugene here has seen better days you can see someone sharpied in an eyeball and it kind of ran a little bit and I think he's got a huge crack in his antlers and the red part on his back was an intentional scratching that I think someone did for the finish so we do have some tools that we're gonna be using today just some basic gesso and we're gonna be covering this guy and his brother and sister completely in gesso you can actually do any color that you want I chose white because when that resin shows through a little bit I wanted to have kind of that translucent feel to it but if you paint these guys completely black then it's going to be a lot more opaque your colors might pop a little more in addition to the gesso you're also going to need lots of gloves you're going to need mixing cups for your resin and these are not a necessity but I highly recommend you get some alcohol links from amazon.com I will leave a link to all of the items that I am using after the resin is completely dry I might be putting some gold flakes so these are mica powders they do pretty much the exact same thing as 
as the alcohol ink as far as coloration goes, but they do it in a very different way. These have a lot of glitter to them and a lot of shine. You'll see kind of what I mean as I'm mixing these resins. Paper towels, lots of paper towels. Two mixing cups, one to put your hardener in, one to put your resin in, and then you're going to have to mix them. So make sure that the cup that you're mixing both of these in is big enough to hold both amounts of liquid. And you're also gonna wanna stick to stir things with. I also have a heat gun. I found they're only about 20 to $25 online, so if you can afford it, definitely grab one. It's made life so much easier. The first two or three times I did resin, I was using a lighter. It does work, but it doesn't work nearly as well. And finally, you're gonna want resins. Whoops, upside down, upside down, boo. You're gonna want your resins. I'm using the brand Dr. Crafty. You are gonna wanna have so many drop cloths, it's ridiculous. Guys, a mask. You need to have a mask and you need need to be doing this in a well ventilated area. My desk has a huge window right in front that I do leave open while I'm doing any sort of pouring. When I'm done with the pouring, I leave the room and close the door and let the fumes seep out. So let's get to gessoing. I'm gonna gesso this guy and I'm gonna gesso his two brothers and then we're gonna get to the fun part. So for these guys, I actually ended up having to do two coats. Remember, the resin does tend to spread out. It will get a little bit translucent. So you wanna make sure that the background that you're painting is the color that you're okay seeing behind it. I recommend either a black or a white, but hey, if you wanna get creative and paint them red, whatever you wanna do, do it. Two coats, here we go. So now we're getting to the resin. The resin needs to be poured in equal amounts. If you do not have these done in equal amounts, then they will not harden. Your resin should only take about 24 to 48 hours to cure. Each one, each resin is different, so make sure you're reading the resin instructions. So this is the mixing part. You wanna make sure as you're mixing this that you are scraping the sides. And when you first pour one liquid into the other, one is very clear, the other one is kind of foggy white. You wanna mix it until you don't see that foggy white anymore. So I decided for this one that we're going to have four different colors, so I have four different cups. Um, and I'm equally distributing that mixed resin into those four different cups. Then I'm putting the mica powder inside of each cup. It's up to you how much you wanna use. I really wanted these to be as opaque as possible, so I put about a scoop and a half in each cup. And then I just used a popsicle sticks. You're going to need popsicle sticks and make sure that you are mixing these up really, really well so the powder is gone. So here's our mousse ready to be poured. We're going to be doing just a clean pour. So basically what that means is we're gonna pour each cup individually onto the mousse. So for that reason, I had to make sure that the mousse is elevated. So he's sitting on top of two cups that are underneath him. Hence the reason why he's so close to the camera. He is elevated so that when the uh, resin drips, it drips down below him and doesn't puddle near his edges. And resin Resin, just FYI, resin does run. So make sure that you are kind of putting in a barricade. I recommend putting plastic down on your desk. And then what I do is I prop the plastic up in kind of a square pattern so that the resin can't escape. It's not very forceful, but it is slow and messy. So yeah, I'm just gonna shut up and let you watch. So with the popsicle stick, I'm just going back and covering up some of the edges that really just didn't want to get covered. And here's where the heat gun comes in. So you can't see it on the screen, but the heat gun is popping all of the little bubbles that are in the resin. It's bringing those to the surface and popping them, but then it's also moving the paint around. It's moving the resin around. So you can see it kind of spreading out and making new patterns. Eugene has turned into a cow. This is alcohol ink. This is how you can use alcohol ink to get kind of a marbleized 
pattern, which is really what we're going for here. I wanted a dark marble pattern. Unfortunately, we did end up losing a lot of the blue as we did this, um, but I'm okay with that. I'm gonna, it really turned out beautiful anyways, and I'm gonna put some of the blue into another one of our mousses. And this is our final Eugene. He looks like marble. I think he is fantastic. fan freaking tastic So I let him dry for 24 hours and moved on to the next mousse in the meantime. So we have to re-pour everything and I'm just gonna shut up for this part and let you guys watch the beautification of the two other moose siblings. Guys, I am 
so thrilled with the project. It took three days. This is day number three of getting these guys done. I actually still have a little bit of work to do on them. I really want to clean up the edges and all of that stuff, but I also want to get this video out tomorrow. Oh my gosh, can you believe it? Actually, it's funny because Eugene, the one that had the cracked antler and the mascara and all that stuff, he's actually my favorite. I love him. I think he is just absolutely just- Bro, you're stunning. You're absolutely stunning. Oh my God, look at the swirls in him. Look at that. It's like a beautiful marbling. And the other two just finished drying this morning. So I did Eugene on day one as an experiment and I did the other two yesterday. This guy is probably my least favorite. Um, it could just be because I'm not a huge fan of the color palette. Josh suggested that I do a Canadian, so red and white. Red and white looked way too simple. It needed something else. So I added black. He legit said, don't add black. I added black. I don't know. It, and maybe it's also because it's a very, very masculine mousse. Oh yeah. And I do tend to lean towards the more feminine decor. So I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to go back over him and do a different pour. I don't know. I haven't decided. Uh, let me know in the comments if you really like him. If you really like him, I'll keep him. I'll put him up in the shop and one of you guys can grab him. He's actually got like four or five little bubbles. And that's just because when I went in with the heat gun, it was really hard to see what I was doing. The sun was out yesterday, so there was already a glare plus the lights that I was working with. So I just missed some of the bubbles. I think he looks 10 times better than he did, but I do think that he probably probably needs a little bit of, you know, an upkeep. This one is close to being my favorite. I still think I'm a fan of the brown, oddly enough. I love Eugene the most, but OMG, Lisa Frank, right? Lisa Frank. And I'm gonna be putting all of these up in the shop and see, she got the bubbles too. Oh, she got them even worse. I may have to do another pour on her just to kind of maybe hide the bubbles, but it'll be a clear pour because I love these colors way too much. I've got to get better with that heat gun. It's a learning process. I've got to clean up the back. I'm gonna clean up the edges on these. Oh, oh, you know what I might do with her? I might go in and add just a little bit of gold leaf with her where all of the bubbles are. I can add just little hints of gold leaf around it. I think that that'd be really pretty. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna test it out. If it doesn't look good, I won't do it. God, I'm so in love with her. Even with the bubbles, she's pretty fantastic. So how did we do with our goals? We got these guys for $3.50 for the pair. So roughly a dollar a moose. Originally, I was trying to sell them as a trio for $25. I've had them listed since May and no one even nibbled. I do believe that with these pours and these renovations, I can sell these for around $50 a moose. They will be sold separately. Don't worry, they have exchanged emails. So the moose siblings will keep in contact with each other. But these guys are gonna go up in the shop for about 50, $55 a piece. The only one that I think I'm going to change, other than cleaning up the edges and adding in the gold leaf to the Lisa Frank mousse, this is the only one that might get a complete makeover. But I don't know if that's a project I'm gonna get too soon. If you want that mousse, let me know. I'll let you know if he is sold. I'll leave a listing to these mousse, mousse, mousses below. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and make sure that you are subscribing and clicking the little bell because I'm a small channel and the small channel needs some help. So please, please, please subscribe. And if you have resoned anything or if you have any fun craft ideas, let me know. Have you renovated something recently? Have you upcycled something that you found in the store or do you just sell things as is? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys next Friday. Bye.